Morning. Our thought for the week is yet another plumb line keeping us holding the standard of uh, righteousness, godliness, and good character and health in our marriages and in our families. So we're thinking about 15 plumb lines. If you have missed any of them, go back and watch previous video, share the videos. We want to spread the word as we're working through this series. Here is another plumb line. It's a, this one may seem a little odd to you, but I hope not. Love is a cul-de-sac. Love is a cul-de-sac. What do I mean? Love's a cul-de-sac. Well, drive around suburban neighborhood and you have experienced thinking you're going on a through street. You're going from one street to connect to another street and you're using a little side street to get there. And you went and you found out that it didn't go all the way through. It called a sack in a little round cul-de-sac and there were houses there and you couldn't get out to the street you wanted to get to so you had to turn around come back a cul-de-sac is where things stop they come to an end it's not a through street into anything so what do i mean love is a cul-de-sac well in relationships we can have a tendency to tag things with behavior, with actions, or with things that benefit us. And without realizing it, we can love in ways of manipulation. We can use uh, approval in ways of manipulation. We can say, you know, I'm, I'm proud of you because you da da da, which isn't all bad. I mean, maybe, perhaps your, your child has done a great job in school and you say, I'm really proud of you that you devoted yourself so hard to this uh, subject. That's good. And that's affirming and so forth. Um, we have to be a little careful and a little aware that sometimes if pride is uh, and, and approval and accommodation is always hooked to something that is done before long, someone can begin to think that if they don't accomplish much, then maybe they're not all that appreciated. If they don't accomplish much, maybe they're not all that approved. And so we have to think through, um, some of these issues. It's certainly the case when it comes to love. If I say to my wife, I love you because you make great food. I love you because you're beautiful. I love you because you're such a great mother. I love you because you're an amazing daughter-in-law. I love you because you create our home to be a place of refuge and safety. My wife Praise God does all of those things, and I'm so blessed. But what happens if she fails in one of them? What happens if she doesn't do the things that I've said I love her because she does them? Well, it might bring into question, what's the nature of my love if it's hooked on to her performance? See, here's the thing. In marriage... In family, our job is to love, which means operate in another's best interest. And we're to do that irrespective of what the other person does. It isn't something where there's sort of a reuptake, where I love and you did this for me and it just makes me love and then you did it again and it makes me love and you did it again and it makes me love. No, the, the reason for my love is not because it's a through street to something else. It's not a through street to another place. It's not that I love and walk through and you do this and then it makes me love you more. It's rather, I love you because of who you are. That my love called to sex at my wife. It called to sex at my children. That's the nature of unconditional love. The nature of unconditional love is that it's not a through street. The moment it becomes a through street, it becomes conditional because what happens when you don't get what you want? What happens when your expectation gets crushed or crumbled? Well, then your love begins to waffle and you begin to feel like you're done wrong in some way and it begins to shape you in different ways and how you respond to them. Instead, love is by nature a cul-de-sac so you got to think of it that way. 
You just love, irrespective of what they do, irrespective of their performance, irrespective of their response, that you're doing your side of the street of love regardless of what's going on on their side of the street. It's cul-de-sac. Let me give you a couple of scripture verses that I think are helpful. Philippians 2.3 says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Now, of course we use this text and think about humility because that's the context of it. And we can think largely in terms of service, the doing nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. But here's the thing. Do nothing. Well, flip that. That means that everything we should do should be selfless and should be driven by humility. That includes our loving. I, I, I'm not allowed to love in a way of, uh, that has a focus on reciprocity. What well, comes back to me. I'm, I'm to love with one direction. I'm to love simply where it goes into the cul-de-sac and it's not a through street into any benefit for me. However, in principle, I get we, we can go, yeah, that makes great sense, Brian. But in practice, we, we can tend toward loading expectations upon our spouse and loading expectations upon our children and our siblings and our parents and grandparents and so forth. And we have to be people who can love without expectation. That, that allows us to then be like Jesus. How do I know that? Listen to this famous text about a husband and how he should love. Ephesians 5.25, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. As Christ loved the, does, does Christ love the church conditioned upon its behavior? Does Christ love the church if it fill in the blank? The answer is no, Christ dies. In fact, what we read in um, Romans 5, right? Romans 5, 8, that God commends his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. His love is not conditioned upon something in us. So I want to challenge you to let love be a cul-de-sac. Don't let love be conditional. Don't let it be engaging in a relationship of reciprocity. Don't let it be uh, texturized by how the person responds. Don't let it be because anything. In a sense, if there's any because, I love, right? We, we, the scripture tells us we love God because he first loved us. What, 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 is, what is the causal agent for your love for your spouse? What's the causal agent for your love for your children, your grandchildren, your grandparents, your parents, your siblings? The causal agent is that Christ loved you. So you also ought in like manner to love as Christ loved. Remember Ephesians 5, 25, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Love is a cul-de-sac, not a through street. May the Lord bless you. Take care. Thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, click like, subscribe to our channel, or leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Most importantly, if it ministered to you or you know someone it could minister to, share it with them and spread the word about these thoughts for the week. Thanks for joining us.